All right, next letter. It says, good afternoon, Pastor Jennings. Good uh, Oh, yeah, it's afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Brother Judah. All right, Judah. I am a Hebrew Israelite. All right. I was there Sunday with the rest of my brethren mm. when we visited your campus. Sir, I must say that looking back at the video and listening to one of our brothers record, I felt ashamed and I felt embarrassed. That's interesting. He focused more on the size of your church than the matter at hand, which made me feel as though we were more jealous of what you have accomplished than what we came for. He took too much time talking about the size of your church, and then the statement was made that you must have been a drug dealer, which was insulting. This put me in an odd position for when I got home, my wife co commented and said, I quote, it made us look like a group of jealous black men. Pastor Jennings, sir, I personally would like to apologize. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Would like to apologize for participating in that gathering on Sunday. I hope one day that I can visit your church personally. You're more than welcome. Until then. I do hope you accept my apology, Shalom. Yes, I accept your apology. By all means, I do. You know, one scripture says, there is some good in thee. Indeed. Amen. That's right. All right, next letter. Next letter. It says, good afternoon, Pastor Gino Jennings. I hope this letter finds you doing well and in the best of health. I'm a little tired, but I'm coming along. <laughs> My, All name, right. <laughs> my name is Brother Raheem Muhammad, formerly a member of the Nation of Islam. I was in the FOI, you know, the Fruit of Islam. I saw the escapade that took place at your church by the Hebrew Israelites. Sir, are you aware that many of the Hebrew Israelites are ex-Nation of Islam followers? Yes, I am aware of such. I was applauded that these black men would stand on the outside of a black pastor's church, hollering, screaming like a gang of thugs. In my years of being in the FOI, we have never sworn any religious place because we had grievances or disagreed with what religious belief. I was hoping you would not come out as they wanted you to, so I waited. I tuned into your live webcast of your conference, and I must say, the Saturday night sermon, you handled it well. Thank God for that. You kept your composure. And as you always say, you call it a spade a spade. I have three questions to the black Hebrew Israelites. All right. What are they? First, have you ever encircled an all-white Christian church? Oh, very interesting question. Number two. And this question is, uh, from Mr. Muhammad is directed to the Hebrew Israelites. He ain't directing to me. Right, that's right. Did you ever encircle? An all-white Christian all church. all-white Christian church. That's a very good question. Yes. Number two. All right. You know the difference of belief between you and the Muslims. So why have you never surrounded a mosque? Very good question. Number three. Why haven't you surrounded a mosque? All right. Number three. Seeing that many of our black young men are being shot down by white police officers, why have you never surrounded a police station? Very good question. When I look at the Hebrew Israelites' track record, they always attack black churches and then say they love black people. Stay strong, Pastor Jennings. We have a lot of respect for you. I just wanted to drop you a few lines. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Very good letter. And those were very, very Interesting question. 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 There's a, you know, we're living in a sad time now. But there's many letters like this, many of different organizations that are appalled because the truth of God is extremely internationally popular and known. We're known for our strictness, known for our discipline, and known for our Bible stand. We're not out there arguing. And they're not the first ones that came outside. Years ago, 
on Frankfurt Avenue. There was a preacher. He's dead now with his church. Uh, my children was little then. Bishop Tooks. And uh, he passed away. And if you're going to come on outside someone's church, at least know who the preacher, you know, what he looked like. I think at the time, my oldest daughter, I think it was Brittany Sierra, and my oldest son, he was the baby, Ernie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so when I drove up on Letterly Street, they was all already out there and uh, giving out, you know, flat flyers and whatnot. This Pastor Jennings, he's a liar. He done preached about 40-something lies, and they had all this stuff written out. So when I drove up, I let my window down. Uh, Dottie said, what you doing? I said, they don't even know what I look like. She said, what you going to do? I said, watch this. I said, sir, excuse me, what's going on? Yeah. He ran to my car. He said, you go to that church? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, you go to Gino Jennings church? I said, I go to the church here. He said, he's a liar and a false prophet. I said, he is? <laughs> he said, I tell you, you should come out of this place. The fella gave me a long list of scribble scrapple. You got to leave this church and follow Bishop E.W. Tooks. He is the only one right in the world. I said, in the world? <laughs> he said, in the world. He said, take this. I said, Who, what is this? He said, these are all the lies Gino Jennings preached. Mm -hmm. I asked, I said, have you ever met Gino Jennings? He said, no. I said, so if he come outside now, you won't know what he looked like? He said, no, but I know he's of the devil. I said, I will remember that, sir. <laughs> I rolled my window up and parked while my wife was trying to keep her composure <laughs> from laughing. <laughs> because they had no clue it was me whom they was talking to. And even when a false church came up, right. we would not go outside and belittle ourselves right. and act like a fool. If someone wrote me, another Hebrew Israelite wrote me, I didn't get a chance to bring the letter down, and said, I'm curious, how did the discussion come about between you and the nation of Islam? Well, on Frankfurt Avenue, our old headquarters temple, Smallwood Muhammad, Najee Muhammad, and Daoud came to service one day. I didn't know who they were. But I can tell by their mannerisms they were Muslims. Uh -huh. And Williams, we was up teaching, and Williams was going to that Bible, and I was explaining, and it fascinated them. So before I ended, Smallwood raised his hand up. May I ask you a question, sir? He said, first and foremost, I never saw this thing that y'all do in my life in no church. He said, the chemistry between you and Brother Williams is just, it's interesting. And uh, he said, but if you, if you don't mind, sir, respectfully, I have a question. He asked the question. Williams went to, I called for the scripture. Williams went to it, got it, broke it down. He said, okay, you know, because Small would always lick in his lips. That's good. He asked another question. When he asked the question, Williams already had the scripture. I went into it, broke that down. He asked, if I'm not mistaken, about two or three questions and sat down. And after service, all three men came up, introduced themselves, and we met. Never, at no time, and they came to the church about three or four or five times asking questions. Never, at no time, were they disrespectful or disruptive. Smallwood started writing me letters, laying me out. He said, you're the false prophet. He said, you're a liar. He said, what you're preaching is a lie. And the subject was that God created himself from triple darkness. And I teach that God didn't create himself from triple darkness. God always was and God have always been. So after he would write me, he would come to visit the church. And I see him in the congregation. I said, Smallwood, I got your letter. You called me a false prophet. And he wouldn't laugh. And then after service, he would come up, shake my hand, and embrace. I said, what you doing hugging the false prophet? <laughs> but he was always, I mean, respectful. 
Even if you look at the debate today on Frankfurt Avenue, the whole debate was respectful. Yes, it was. When me and Rodney Muhammad, one of Farrakhan direct ministers, who was over at that time, if I'm not mistaken, he was the minister of the East Coast region, where he and I, before he and I debated, we went out to dinner. A lot of folks don't know what went on behind the scenes. There was a Muslim restaurant called the Garden of Bilal. Yes. Oh, boy, they had some good food, too. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And the food was fresh. The FOI, a few of them, and some of our brothers, along with me and the FOI, uh, Brother Muhammad, we went and met at the Garden of Bilal. Yes. The Fruit of Islam and my brothers, they sat at the table, and they was conversing, you know, as if they knew each other all their lives. And me and Rodney Muhammad, we sat at the table discussing the logistics yeah. of the debate. And, uh, and of course, I wasn't going to leave without eating some dinner. But, and we even took pictures together. Nice. The whole discussion was respectful. That's right. The whole meeting was respectful. And then when, we, when it came time for us to debate, he threw out his sharp windows at me when it was his time for the platform. He said there's, I forgot how he worded it, but I remember the one phrase he said, yeah, there's nothing but a nuisance on my post. <laughs> and the whole place erupted. And, I, and, I, and it took me, I laughed. Because I was saying to myself, keep the fire. <laughs> I had no idea he was going to say it and then go. But they were always respectful. Yeah. And uh, me and the brothers, we were coming back either from Boston or either Seattle, Washington. Uh -huh. And who do we see for the first time since that discussion? Brother Daoud. He saw us before we saw him. Uh -huh. Daoud was the one that kept saying that God is a black man. I asked him, was God begotten? I said, I know you know Catholic, because there ain't no mother up in heaven. And that's what he do. He was the one standing looking up. <laughs> but uh, we embraced and just talked a little. And he was saying, you know, it's good to see y'all. But it was respectful. Nice. So if the Hebrew Israelites would have came respectfully, then I would sincerely took on the consideration right. to have the discussion. Nice. But let me make an example. Uh -huh. If Brother Kevin going to come to my house, spray paint it, yeah. bust all the windows, uh -huh. give me the finger, why in the world would he ask me to come? Can I come to your house to have dinner? <laughs> no, you ain't coming to my house to have dinner no. because your very approach was wrong. That's right. You know, the Bible said let all things be done oh, yeah. decently and in order and in order. All right, next letter. Next letter says, good evening, Mr. Wait, wait, Gino. Before you read that letter, let's go back to the one that Mr. Muhammad sent and just read those questions again. First question. Because I just want the questions because they're not directed to me. Right. Listen. First question. Have you ever encircled an all-white Christian church? Because they call white brothers Edomites, and they say they are the enemy. They say they are of the devil. And uh, they have no chance to enter to the kingdom of God. Listen. Next question. Next question. You know the differences of belief between you and the Muslims. So why have you never surrounded a mouse? Good question. Yeah. All right. And the last one. Seeing that many of our black young men are being shot down by white police officers, why have you never surrounded a police station? Very good. good question. Very good. So uh, you can answer them on your webcast. You're playing Pastor Jennings, and I'm glad you are. <laughs> and they are, uh, which I don't mind, really, because I'm used to such. Yeah. But uh, act, act, answer these legitimate questions. And if you haven't surround police stations or, as you call, Edomite churches and, or mosques, it's about time that you do so to boost up your track record. Yeah. All right. Because I don't have the time to waste to surround nobody, church, physically. But God knows I surround the world with gospel. That's right. Yeah. 
I surround you with Bible. That's our interest. That's, that's what our interest is. 